Sam Babal Ali was uh, unanimously confirmed as the Inspector General of Police for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Police Council confirms Usman al Kali Baba as Inspector General of Police. Federal government suspends streeter operations in Nigeria over activities that are detrimental to the country. Under my watch, I ensured that there was prudence in the management of resources. Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 interface with Senate Committee held for Nigeria's success story. All I say is to motivate people to service, to encourage those who have served, to always show that there's a reward for service. Plus, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, BORN, recognizes members for contribution to its development. Good evening, this is NTA Network News. I am Jumwe Yusuf, and we are live in Abuja. Adiola Kami Akere joins me from Lagos, and Zere Digmun will be joining me from Al Joss Studios in the course of the bulletin. Now let's get the details. The National Police Council has formally confirmed the appointment of Usman al Ali Baba as Substantive Inspector General of Police. The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Megrid Ngiadi, announced this while briefing journalists after the council's meeting. Presided over by President Mohamedou Buhari, State House Correspondent Adam Musambo reports. During a virtual meeting of the National Police Council, which lasted more than two hours, members not only scrutinized the rich credentials of the appointee, but also demanded explanations on how he intends to tackle the internal security challenges bedeviling the country. The council, because of the track records of service of the appointee, the Inspector General of Police, uh, Somba Ali, was uh, unanimously confirmed as the Inspector General of Police for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President used that opportunity to congratulate him for this appointment and to call on him to ensure that uh, the security challenges that this country is uh, facing are brought to the barest minimum. The minister also confirmed that a new IGP will be given the necessary support and assistance by the federal government towards discharging his mandate. If, if you want to have a safe society, you, it has to be expensive. And this administration is quite aware of this and is determined to ensure that uh, whatever is needed to secure this country is also provided. At the last Security Council meeting that we had, Mr. President has aggregated all these things and set up a committee under the chairmanship of the vice president to look into all the issues of not only the police but other security agencies as well and to come up with some recommendations that are tenable, that are practicable so that uh, government will intervene. We are making progress towards that direction. IGP Usman Al-Kali Baba, who briefed the council on the security situation in the country, assured the president and indeed Nigerians that the confidence reposed in him will be justified. We, in collaboration with other security agents and the military, will try to checkmate all acts of lawlessness, criminality, and unlawful agitations in order to ensure life and properties are saved, and at the same time, Nigerian citizens go about their lawful businesses. He said already the worrisome situation in the southeast as regards the attacks on critical national assets and killings of security personnel is being checked. And with the establishment of the Police Trust Fund and Community Policing, the signing into law of the Police Act 2020, as well as several other intervention funds, the desired technology and intelligence-led policing, the IGP said, will be a reality in the best interest of Nigeria. I've also been able to brief council on rescue of kidnapped victims and what we are doing to secure the school children 
that are being kidnapped and how to go about securing those that are still going to the school. He said since coming on board, a number of arrests have been made as regards criminal elements while several firearms and serious weaponry recovered. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Echo's parliament is concerned that the security situation in Nigeria could undermine its capacity to support the stability of other West African countries. Consequently, members of parliament are recommending regional support to stem the tide of insecurity in what they call the Big Brother Nigeria. On a gay five face reports. When Nigeria sneezes, West African countries catch cold. Now, this played out a great deal as Nigeria presented its country report to plenary at the ongoing ordinary session of the ECOWAS parliament. In clear and unambiguous terms, the security situation in Nigeria is dire. There has been tremendous increase in the spate of unfettered violence, abductions, and killings by terrorist groups bandits, and other criminal elements. Debates arising from that presentation centered on the need for West African countries to support the giant of the sub-region, Nigeria, to help settle its security challenges. Nigeria has helped almost every African you know, country in the sub-region. I want to ask them if they will request for international support. That reality of insecurity, we must stand up to it, admit it exists, and do all that we can to deal with it. Now, beyond settling the security challenges, Nigeria parliamentarians in ECOWAS parliament expect countries in the region to respect protocols and conventions, especially those that relate to free movement of persons and goods. If you have weak policing systems, especially at the borders of our neighboring countries, it allows for infiltration of uh, illegal arms and ammunition, especially from, north, from the northern part of Africa. On Nengye, fine fist, and news. Though business activities have relatively returned to Tegna, where about 136 children were abducted Sunday afternoon at Saliu Tanku Islamia. However, some shop owners in the area are still counting their losses following the bugling of their shops by bandits during the assault on the school. Mukhtar Abu Bakr Wawo in Tegna reports on the mood of the town. Salu Tanko Islamia School Tegna revealed that this school was donated by a retired civil servant in 2005 to promote both Islamic and Western education. Most of its pupils are reportedly orphans acquiring education at no cost. Registration of the school is free for everybody, but orphans there is, it has up, upper hand. We register them free, we give them books free, we, sew, we, we, we buy uniform for them. Who is old Muhammad Sani Hashim was among the 11 children abandoned on the bush part by bandits after they were abducted. His mother, Khadija Hashim, still have three of her children in captivity. We are all, only waiting and calling on God to touch their hearts. Maybe they will call later. Meanwhile, the Sunday attack on the town by the bandits did not only stop in the abduction of the children. Muhammad Ishak Jamiu is a businessman who alleged that his shop was among business outlets that were boggled by the bandits. Only God now just save us. So my glass is outside with phones inside. When they come, they break the glass, pack out the phones where it's inside. This is Tegna Junction, which is a few meters away from the Islamia school where the abduction took place. And like other parts of the town, it's now a beehive of activities in Tegna. Mukhtar Abu Bakaru, NTA News. Thank you, Mukhtar. Let's now join Abdullahi Muhammad in Tegna for more. Abdullahi, good evening. Good evening, and thanks for joining me here, Jimmy. Okay, can you bring up up to speed with happenings right now in Tegna? Uh, just like uh, uh, Mukhtar uh, reported, uh, the, the town is uh, calm, businesses uh, have uh, picked up, and um, 
shops and other businesses that have been uh, destroyed as a, uh, during the attack are being put together, they are repairing their shops and so on and so forth. And just like I said that uh, there's normalcy in the town, um, that uh, scenario is not playing out in uh, the homes of uh, the parent of uh, those children that were taken. Uh, of course, what we saw there was anguish, uh, their pains, especially that most of uh, the children that were taken now of the age of between five, seven, and uh, eight that are supposed to be with their parent. And uh, imagine they're in the bush, uh, the rains, sunshine, and so on and so forth. But of course, they are having a kind of a solace, a solace of uh, the fact that they told us that there's a kind of engagement. Engagement, of course, they said is sketchy. You know, they won't be able to tell us exactly what has been going on. But a kind of an engagement that they're hopeful at the end of the day that it is going to turn out uh, uh, to the release of uh, these children. Okay, what's the security situation there? You know, any, you know, synergy between the security forces there to ensure that these children return home safe? Well, uh, we came in around uh, five o'clock uh, this uh, evening, but uh, if you're driving from Mina uh, towards, uh, I mean, to, towards Zungeru to Tegin and so on and so forth, but you won't uh, see a kind of a roadblock or anything uh, on the road. But uh, at least when you get into the town itself, you see activities of uh, security agents, you know, going up and down and so on and so forth. But you know, they won't tell us exactly what they are doing. That is left for the security. But what we uh, saw is the fact that uh, there are you know, security agents, you know, going up and down, doing their own thing which we wouldn't uh, question. I wouldn't, uh, in fact, they wouldn't even give us any information about what they are doing. You know what I mean, Jumai? Okay, Abdullah and Mohammed, thank you so much for your update on the situation in Tegna. We'll, I'm sure you'll be bringing us more reports from that place as soon as it comes in. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Moving on, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has described as unfortunate the involvement of prominent citizens who engaged in the spreading of fake news on the death of Professor Godswill Obioma. Lai Mohammed stated this during a chat with members of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture press, press call. Anthony Fawson tells us more. Expressing regret in the manner with which the death of the NECO registrar, Professor Godswill Obioma, was reported in the social media. The tweet of uh, Professor uh, Chidi Adekalu, and without missing words, I think it's the highest level of irresponsibility on the part of a man that, of you know, with such a pedigree, a former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission to engage in such egregious fake news. The minister said the fake tweet by the former NHRC chairman has the capacity to cause a breach of public peace. You can imagine what would have happened, for instance, if there were reprisal attacks based on that, you know, fake news from uh, Professor Kidi Odinkalio. And he's not alone in this. Now, I think it's about time we wake up in Nigeria and take, uh, you know, uh, uh, this issue of fake news more seriously than we are taking it. It is in realization of such situation, the minister pointed out informed the need to launch a sensitization campaign on the dangers of fake news and hate speech in 2017. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Another development, the federal government has suspended indefinitely the operations of the micro-blogging and social networking service Twitter in Nigeria. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed announced the suspension in a statement by his special assistant Shegun Ademi, citing the persistent use of the platform for activities that are capable of undermining Nigeria's corporate existence. The minister said the federal government has also directed the National Broadcasting Commission NBC to immediately commence the process of license in all OTT and social media operations in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria is seeking partnership with global law enforcement agencies to help facilitate the return of looted funds to the country, which amount to billions of dollars annually. The executive chairman of the executive 
Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, stated this at the United Nations General Assembly on Corruption in New York, United States. The chairman says measures must be put in place to mitigate the continuous flow of looted funds from developing nations to the advanced countries. To achieve this, the chairman says state parties must ensure the implementation of an effective anti-money laundering policy by international financial centers. We have been engaging with international law enforcement agencies across the world and some of the collaboration has led to the recovery and repatriation of stolen funds, including the recent return of 4.2 million pounds by the UK government that was stolen from Nigeria by a former governor. Nigeria has been elected to chair the 20-member country Global Transparency Network. The recognition is believed to be as a result of the extensive work the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NETI, is doing on contract transparency. Benny Adams tells us more. Contract transparency, I, Oji Obone Oji, the Executive Secretary of NETI, has just been elected as the International Chair of Global Con Contract Transparency Network, covering 20 countries around the world. This is coming after a six months old promise to be sincere and transparent in the activities of the extractive industries that border on contracts for exploration and production of oil, gas, and mining. It is also coming at a time the management of NAETI is bridging the knowledge gap of its staff through knowledge sharing with a view to re-strategize on ways to operate better as the anti-corruption agency in the extractive industry. For the NAETI boss, Oji Obonaya Oji, five years is quite a little time to clean up. So, as the time ticks, every moment counts. We, I don't like government to... To, to be asking for money when we're sitting on natural resources that if properly managed, we could generate a lot. Of, we need to help government. Where NIT is ready to help the government, help government generate revenue. And any idea that comes in this direction, we are in a hurry to harvest those ideas and put them into practice. NIT seeks to link their reports to visible impacts that Nigerians can see in a short while. In Abuja, Benny Adams. NTA the Central Bank of Nigeria is not only concerned about the banking hole, but the environment in which they operate. Therefore, a tree planting exercise is flagged off to celebrate the 2021 World Environment Day. Musa Abubakar reports that the CBN governor, Godwin Emefele, reminds financial institutions to embrace sustainable banking to achieve environmental sustainability. <laughs> Not in an air-conditioned hall, but feeling the heat outside the hall. Governor Mefele, farming as it were, digging deep to plant a tree in his name as environment-friendly CBN boss. Even in such function, the governor does not lose sight of the finance world. Sustainable environment is metrics to sustainable banking. A day like this reminds us that we need to make sure that we remove all anything that is creating pollution in our environment. And I'm sure that we all know about the need globally for us to go green. And in an attempt to go green also means that our ecosystem, we must keep it alive to make sure that everything remains green. So it's on this basis that even in the banking industry, we have made sure that uh, lending, lending practices must also take into consideration our environment. Planted is over. Nourishing to escape the hands of deforestation is a huge assignment and encouraging the principles for sustainable banking for stronger economy is also a task the CBM boss reminds his staff. Okay, thank you. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. We'll be back shortly. You're welcome back. Nigeria must have been one of the countries that have done well in managing the COVID-19 pandemic so far. Now, this is the view of the Senate Committee on Special Duties at a meeting with the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, which attribute the success to presidential commitment. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. It was an overview on activities 
of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, headed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. Details of relationship with other agencies and ministries, funding and expenditure were received by the committee. Under my watch, I ensured that there was prudence in the management of resources. We have the advantage of being able to watch what is happening in other countries and learn our lessons quickly and be able to adjust and take our own remedial measures. Um, at the peak of this uh, pandemic, the Federal Radio Corporation and the NTA donated, devoted a lot of their programs and their time to the advocacy. So it, it is correct to say that they were rendering social services because they were not paid for it. But other channels, we had to pay them. I must also congratulate you for doing a yeoman's job, an excellent job that you have done. The need for a broadcasting code by the National Broadcasting Commission to compel media stations to provide prime time for public sensitization on COVID-19 was also received by the committee. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. Still on legislative matters, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, says the 9th National Assembly is committed to ensuring proper inclusion of women in nation building. This was his position while receiving a group advocating gender and equal opportunities bill on a cuts visit. Mobolaji Mori Birin has the report. The women group is seeking to bring back the gender and equal opportunities bill, which could not be passed by the 8th Assembly. What we now have is devoid of all the contentious issues. We also want to seek your support to co-sponsor the bill. Uh, we believe that the bill is one that will address the issue of discrimination that continues to undermine the, the rights and full potential of Nigerian women. Well, the, rep the report we are getting from the public hearings from the zones is heartwarming. We are getting good news that people are in support of uh, this um, total inclusion of women into leadership positions. The president of the Senate assured his support for the bill, which has been on the floor of the Senate for years. I want to assure you that we are going to work with you. Uh, this is a different assembly. You have also done some work on the bill. So let me say it's a different bill, even though the contents are not yet known to, to us. The Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill is aimed at providing enabling environment for women to excel in the society. Mobolaji, Mori Biri, NTA News. Senate has promised more legislative support to the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission to tighten up all loose ends in its act to be able to enforce compliance with the statutory payment system. The Senate Committee on Establishment and Public Service made this promise during an oversight to the Commission. Dayo Ogunshola reports. Established as a commission to determine wages and salaries in the public service, Acting Chairman of the Commission identified lack of statutory empowerment to enforce effective regulations and observations of pay system in Nigeria as one of its impediments. Early parliamentary approvals for boards and starters gave the, their boards powers to regulate their salaries, which they have consistently abused. And so they hide behind such powers to want to increase. At a similar oversight, to the Pension Board of the Nigeria Intelligence Agency, as well as Military Pensions Board, the committee commended the two bodies for prompt payment of pensions and benefits to retired officers. As at today, no single agency retiree is owing any form of benefit whatsoever. That can be cross-checked. Initial gratuities and pensions have been paid to all retired military personnel whose retirement documents were received at the board by 15th May 2021. Uh, the purpose of the oversight visit is to hear from you directly. We will do our best to support you. Members of the committee also took time 
to inspect facilities being put in place by the two pension administrators. In Abuja, Dayo Ogunshola, NTA News. The Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has pledged support in the ongoing public hearing on the review of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The National Secretary of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Dara Mola Badi, gave the position of CAN while briefing the media in Abuja. The areas of core interest mm -hmm. of CAN, uh, uh, and it's not just limited to Christians alone, is in a very wide perspective. It touches the media, it touches the market woman, it touches the man on the street, it touches the church, it touches the mosque, it to touches those that are not even uh, Muslims and, uh, and Christians. It's in all ramifications of this, it touches on social life and religious and political life of all uh, Nigerians and those that are living in Nigeria. We are um, asking that provisions, constitutional provisions should be made for inclusion. Not only to say we, they are giving us 35%, but inclusion of female uh, sector in governance of this country. So back in gender equality, power devolution, among other issues in the Constitution Review. The current crisis in the country instigated by indigenous and settler squabbles consuming human lives has been blamed on Nigerian constitution, solution of which must be sought out with national law document. This is a takeaway from a three-day symposium organized by the Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria in collaboration with the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports. The place of identity of Nigerians as the basis for the country's federal system has put to test in recent times. This symposium organized to find the solutions to the recent development in the country has referred to the constitution which mentions indigenous. It regretted that the world acquired a profound presence in people's lives in such a manner that the struggle for power and economic resources revolve around it. Nigeria's tragedy is that we have a constitution that requires critical scrutiny and overhaul. It must specifically aim to remove all distinctions between citizen, indigenous, and settler, or at the very least remove all disadvantages which any Nigerian will suffer as a result of the abuse of his constitutional rights by laws, regulations, and activities by other authorities. The symposium advised the citizens to be cautious and work towards a unified nation of people with common aspirations. Abdullah Musa Sleja, NTUS. The gov federal government and the Judiciary and Parliamentary Workers Union have set up 30 days target towards implementation of financial authority for the judicial arm of government. The decision was taken after a meeting between the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngigay, and the Workers Union, Joseph Austin Report. Judiciary and Parliamentary Workers in Nigeria have been on strike for two months, demanding financial autonomy. This meeting between the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngege, is conveying to us setting a target for implementation. All the parties have also now signed the uh, implementation document. And uh, all the parties are expected to meet up their commitment and obligation are spelled out clearly uh, in the implementation and uh, also uh, agreement. Uh, this, I think, is very, very necessary to ensure that industrial peace and harmony uh, continue to uh, thrive. Already, the courts and state houses of assembly have signed an agreement for the implementation of financial autonomy with the governors and the workers' unions and the federal government are looking to as a workable resolution. We are not oblivious of the fact that uh, this situation has posed serious security challenges for the country, especially as the courts were closed. And the law enforcement uh, agencies had no place to uh, take uh, arrested criminals to. It is becoming a, a national security question and a question affecting human rights. Please let us hear very positive words that will soothe the security and political and 
human right temperature of the country. It is hopeful that the 30 days window will give all parties time to agree on steps towards implementation of the financial autonomy for the judiciary arm of government. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. It's time to join Adiola Kami Akere in our Lagos studio for more on Network News. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Jumai. Good to see you. The persistent gridlock at the Apapa Corridor in Lagos is inducing new ideas and prevailing on terminal operators to follow the guidelines for the review of tariff and adoption of digitalization of all parts operations. Imolea Yotokede Ogunfowura reports that key agencies are beefing up strategies put in place to improve the ease of doing business at the ports. This is a CCTV room where cargo movements, discharge vessels, as well as security of containers are monitored. It is one of the methods adapted to digitize terminal operations. These visits to some of the top terminals is to improve on existing cooperation as well as sensitize more on the need to operate 24 hours as a means of reducing traffic congestion on the roads leading to the port. We have seen terminals that were barely 24% compliant, but now they are reaching 70, 80. And that's why we are really proud to see the changes they have introduced. Um, things are done uh, uh, through automation in this terminal. On the issue of tariff, deal process has been identified as the way out, playing more responsibilities on terminal operators to be just in their duties. Concerning uh, tariff, uh, we have decided to hold on on the increase which was supposed to take effect from uh, 1st of June, but this is something which uh, we deem it's necessary. We are in an environment where Keeping the same tariff in other terms for the last 10 years is not sustainable anymore. As the pace of work at the Apapa Ushudi over Shoki Expressway speeds up, there is hope that it will complement the target of the ease of cargo evacuation when completed. In Lagos, in Moliari Tukedi, Ugunfuwara, NTA News. Now, the chairman, Nigerian St. Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, says government will leverage on technology to build capacity for future economies, which is information-driven. The NITCOM boss gave the assurance at the inauguration of a civic center in Ikorodu to train youths in information communication technology. Michael Olaleye reports. This building is a symbolic description of things falling in place at the right time. Despite the resources mobilized to ensure completion more than 15 years ago, the project remained abandoned. But at a time this expected, help came in an angelic form, and within a week, it was ready for commissioning. To God be the glory, alhamdulillah. The chairman, Nigerians and Diaspora Commission, facilitated the completion and since she has been nursing the ambition of establishing a center to train young people in entrepreneurship skills, this initiative is apt. In this same Lagos Polytechnic, I've been able to give them about 500 computers, laptops, iPads. So we want partnering with Lagos Polytechnic for the Nigerian youth to be, feel free to use this place for various types of training. The immediate one will be on how to make phones. The Lagos State Polytechnic in the Korodu Formerly, a school of science and technology will be leveraging on the expertise of the center to develop capacity in technology while also strengthening research. We are happy that it's going to serve the generality of the Nigerian students, the generality of life tech students, and the entire Nigerian youth for technology development. It is a, a laudable project that uh, will enhance teaching and learning and, of course, research. The center is a child of necessity, considering the indispensability of young people to the future. In Lagos, Michael Alleye, NT News. Network News will continue after this time out. Please stay with us. You're welcome back. 
The support and contribution of the Nigerian Television Authority to the development of broadcasting organizations of Nigeria have been rewarded with a special recognition award by the Umbrella Body for Broadcast Outfits in Nigeria. This was at the 2021 Gala Night, an award organized by the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, BORN. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports. From all parts of the country, these media practitioners, serving and retired, gathered in Abuja for the 74th General Assembly of the organization, after which they converged for the gala night. The event became a time for members to reunite and also wine and dine. One after the other, their dedication and service to the organization over the years were rewarded. And the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad, was on stage twice for personal and organizational recognitions. Former Directors General of the NTA, Shola Omoli, Philip Ofegu, and Muhammad Ibrahim, who was represented by his son, as well as pioneer chairman of BORN, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, Osita Okechuku, also bagged the former chairman of Born Award. All well, I say is to motivate people to service, to encourage those who have served, to always show people that there's a reward for service. Former DG of the NTA, Shola Omole, says the resuscitation of the election debates will further strengthen the nation's democracy. So that the people of this country have the opportunity of listening, sifting the wheat from the chaff, making informed, deductive decisions. There were also posthumous awards for some leaders of the organization who stood out during their time. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Now, the Ministry of Transportation is working to put a cycling policy in place to encourage more Nigerians, especially the elites, to embrace bicycle as a means of transportation. Director Road Transport and Mass Transit Administration, Federal Ministry of Transportation, Mary Udu Ejebe, made this known while the Federal Road Safety Corps paid a courtesy visit to the ministry as part of activities to commemorate the United Nations World Bicycle Day. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. United Nations World Bicycle Day is an annual event to drive on the importance of bicycle. With the theme Cyclists for Life, the campaign, which was taken to different organizations, was to encourage the use of bicycles in Nigeria as an alternative to cars, especially with the current rise in global oil price. This advocacy encourages people to ride bicycle the more, drop your vehicle, use bicycle, and then also for the uh, traffic to ensure they protect the life of the cyclist. On this very special day in the calendar of uh, not only India-Nigeria relations, but also in the world of sustainable development. The ministry has an ongoing plan on green transportation through the use of solar-powered vehicles, cycling and electric vehicles in the country, and is currently working to put a cycling policy in place. Cycling is an act that is beneficial not only to the health and well-being of Nigerians, but also because of its economic benefits. And especially now, a time like this, when we are battling with COVID-19, uh, there is a need to keep a safe distance. It is believed that with more bicycles on the roads, there will be less road accidents, and this will aid the country in achieving 0% road crashes in the country. In Abuja, Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. President Mohamedou Buhari has expressed optimism that the position Nigeria occupies in the FIFA Council will provide tremendous benefits critical to the advancement of football in the country and across the African continent, while granting audience to the President of Nigeria Football Federation and member FIFA Council, Amaju Pinnick. The President announced that a new business model for sports development in the country will soon be unveiled. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the report. The Nigeria Football Federation President Amaju Pinnick, led to the State House by Youth and Sports Minister Sunday Dare, is the third Nigerian to secure the position of FIFA Council membership. 
The position President Buhari said comes at a time the federal government is committed to turning around the fortunes of schools through better infrastructure, more government incentives, as well as public and private sector investments. This is why we have reclassified sports from my recreation to business. A new business model for Nigerian sports development will soon be ready. I look forward to it coming to the Federal Executive Council. I believe in the potential of sports to promote peace, unity, enhance good health, and promote economy. While congratulating Amaju Pinnick on his election victory, President Buhari believes that the NFF president is now appropriately positioned to bring international context to the development of football in Nigeria and therefore the need to use the position towards attracting a global boost to Nigeria's sporting image. One of the greatest sports is football and Nigeria is a great football nation. I am myself a keen follower of football. <laughs> Not flair. <laughs> Therefore, I want to see Nigeria's football develop and move in a more dynamic trajectory. Nigeria also needs a more privatized and better organized football regime that can rival others in Europe and America. The Nigeria Football Federation must therefore work with the sports ministry and football stakeholders to provide Nigeria with a 10-year football master plan. This will be in line with FIFA's commitment to use football development. The president urged corporate organizations to invest in Nigeria's sports development, especially football, towards keeping the nation's youth busy and making the country a great sporting nation. Both the sports minister, Sonde Dari, and the NFF president, Amaju Pinik, thanked President Buhari for his support for sports development in the country, without which they say Nigeria wouldn't have been elected into the FIFA Council. Mr. President, I can also tell you clearly that because I was elected, another Nigerian was also re-elected into the FIFA Ethics Committee which is a matter of your anti-corruption. She is the only Africa in that committee. It goes enough to show that there's so much confidence in your fight against corruption. We look forward to a time very soon when you will graciously approve an annual event to decorate on an annual basis worthy sportsmen and women who go out there, give us podium performance, and bring glory to our country in international competitions that they will be considered for national awards annually. This will encourage them and fuel the spirit of our youth. The president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Amaju Pinnick in particular, pledged to be a worthy ambassador of Nigeria in the Council of the World Football Governing Body. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. For more on sports, let's join Tamara Ebu. Away from the Super Eagles, Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dari has charged Nigeria's women's handball team to do the country proud at the 2021 African Senior Women's Handball Championship in Cameroon. Dari spoke to his special assistant on media, Joshua Akonji, during his visit to the team before they left for Cameroon. The 20-member contingent includes 16 players, two coaches and a doctor. The message out to the girls is, hey, girls, go out there and make Nigeria proud. Nigerians are behind you and we believe that by the special grace of God, they'll go out there and come back victorious. The most important one there or what we are going for is to pick that World Cup ticket. And that sports, back to Jumai. Thank you, Tamara. President Mohamedou Buhari has described late Lieutenant General Joshua Dogonyaro as one of the best soldiers Nigeria ever produced. This is contained in his message at the funeral service of the one-time Nigeria's Chief of Defence Staff in Lantang, Plateau State. Caleb Gochin reports. The many attributes ascribed to the departed general too stood out. His selfless service to the nation and his commitment to God's service. The president represented 
says he received the news of General Dogon Yaro's death with pain, as he was a respected, dedicated, and a successful commander in the Nigerian army. Other speakers taught the same line as they encouraged Nigerians to embrace the good legacies of the deceased for a more united and prosperous nation. The deceased family expressed appreciation to all as they have taken solace in God. Reverend Sylvester Dachomo brought the service to an end with a call on all to always be conscious of the fact that death is inevitable and everyone must account for every deed on earth. A service of songs preceded the funeral with renditions in honor of God for the life of the deceased as the body was lowered. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, NTN News. The death has occurred on Thursday of Al Haji Ahmed Mahmoud, the Galadima Ringim. He was 89. He was the district head of Ringim and the most senior prince next to the Emir. The Galadima was the younger brother of the Emir of Ringim, Al Haji Ahmed Mahmoud, a retired senior adult education instructor in the old Kano state, is survived by 12 children and many grandchildren, among them Al Haji Sanusi Ahmed Mahmoud, a retired management staff of the Federal Road Safety Corps. And that's Network News for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to be a star with NTA as we wage the war against rape and rapists. I am Jumba Yusuf.